on the way, England in red, attacking the net to our left-hand side. Australia, as always, in the golden green. And alongside me, as always, in the commentary box, I have Anita Navin and Anita. The job is only half done or a third done. What are you expecting from tonight's game? Obviously, expecting the Australians to fight back tonight, Charlie, or the press says that they really go on court to win every game. So it's the seven that we expected to be on court and really put the pressure on early. So England have got the work to do. But there we go. It's a good attempt by Bayman. Well, this is what happened in Bath. Australia getting the early goals. But in terms of shooting, England shot overall at 89%, Australia 88%. So there really isn't that much between them. You look at Cox as Bassett takes a couple of goes to get going. Cox shot at 81, Prattley at 90, Bassett at 92, and uh, Bella 89. So the problem, it would seem, is not in the attacking circle for Australia. No, but both teams will want more opportunities, and this is a better start by Australia. Two very fast opportunities, scoring off England's centre pass, so converting that early turnover. So England really do need to respond now. But good work on the line by Hallin and there with Corbyn, stopping the speed of the move through the court to the middle. Oh. It's important for England just to get a settle up. Ball contact for the players. And Joe Harton, who shot so well in bar, opens her account. And England to have the scoreboard ticking. And certainly, Kim Revellian, after a nervous couple of touches, first off, I know I picked her up on her first touch of being a turnover, but. Uh, she put that behind her, and that shows just her mental fortitude and what a prospect she's going to be. Absolutely, and there's a great relationship with um, Rebellion and Brown as they move the ball through from the, from the mid-court area, so that's a partnership I'm sure we'll see more of. And Amaze, the England head coach, looks on. And she'll be hoping on the side can do what they did in Bath, which is come back when under pressure, not once, but twice, and... Again, we said in the second quarter, it's one thing being pegged back in the second quarter, it's another when the finishing line is in sight. And on many an occasion previously, it'd be fair, maybe unfair to say, but I think fair to say England would have crumbled. Absolutely, and it's interesting, Bully really is putting a lot of pressure on the body of Joe Harton, but Theresa Prince very quick to pull that contact, advance the penalty, just sense there's an urgency to try and slow down the game of Harton. Well, just as they said in the studio, Lisa Alexander looks on, Beckford Chambers has to get into the head of her West Coast Fever teammate Caitlin Bassett, so does Bully need to get in the head of Harton. Absolutely, it's all about those early five minutes just to assert yourself in that circle, but there's a lot of pressure being put on both shooters, Bassett holding strong, but great coverage there from Chambers. Again, the bounce pass, this time to Brown. Madison Brown actually picked up player of the match in the second test match in Nottingham back in 2010. Playing in only, uh, well, she made her debut against Scotland one or two matches before that, so similar sort of career path, perhaps, for Kim Revellian. Australia certainly seem to find these talents on a regular basis. Yes, Brown was a player that had just come over with the Diamonds at that point, coming out of the under-21s, but slight dip in performance not seen on the world stage at the World Championships, but she's back in full force. Great take by Guthrie, but just couldn't deliver to Agbizi. Now, a one-on-one, -on -one, Bass in Beckford Chambers, and uh, Brown decides to play possession, which is in once again and good work from Bassett but Bassett wants to get closer in and a good touch from Bayman but it doesn't create the turnover and again Brown shows great patience going back to the 
transverse line to Gomez and Revelian gets her left leg chucked under a falling Serena Guthrie but is okay to continue. Yes, very quick Revelian there just to take the inside position of Guthrie. Good tactical step to take the penalty. Putting Guthrie on the outside, secured another goal for the Diamonds. Erin Bell for me on the goal attack started well. She's pushing through the top of the circle, but there we go, that long ball seen by Bayman again. Excellent. We saw that a couple of times. But Bath, but look at that, she's all alone. The only player in the Australian circle. Bayman just really trying just to lift the attack. Well, this is something that uh, Lisa Alexander wanted to eradicate from their game, and they are five and a half minutes in, and the break is called already. The first break, at least. Cookie up against Gomez, and England are back on level times. So we're just struggling a little bit on the centre pass, getting it through to Corbin, but Cookie's recovering that on the line for England. Good play by Guthrie linking with Cookie. A good double jump by Bully, but it's not enough. And England take the lead for the first time. They lead by one. It's England five, Australia four, and we have 8.45 remaining in the first quarter. And Beckford Chambers is giving Bassett a right old torrid ride in there. No whistle blown, but uh, Bassett... Makes it irrelevant by scoring anyhow. Oh, just reading the diagonal there, Bully just able to take that one with ease. Just limited on the options, England, from the centre pass in the second phase. Just a little bit of work to do. Corbin stuck to get out for the pass. Cookie dominating, but it's just affecting the next ball through to goal. Well, Australia have faced England here at Wembley on four occasions, there's no surprise that uh, they have won all four of those. Last time was back in 2004, Australia won 53-25, then in 2001 they won 55-29, 1986, Australia 44, England 35, 1978, Australia 54, England 31. So uh, they've been fairly comfortable victories for the Diamonds here and uh, a couple of quick goals see them go from one behind to two in front. And that run of three goals should be brought to an end now by Pam Cookie. And it is. Just switch the lead there as well. Clever play by Joe Harton. Just electing to move out the circle, seeing Cookie's run through to goal. Bully already having a better impact on Joe Harton as well. A yeah, lovely pass from Brown to Bell. Bell, good movement. Excellent step change of direction there by Cookie. Oh, Cookie just not giving that the right to Dettri, but uh, she gets a second bite of the cherry, and this time she pops it in. In the trail 7 8. Good work from Sasha Corbin, was it? That's nice, good pick up by Serena Guthrie there as well, just taking the ball through, and real opportunity for England just to even the score. Harton had to be quick there. It was good defence from Australia. Very little space in which to operate. All sorts of shenanigans going on in there. Yeah. Theresa Prince blows in favour of England. And we're back on level terms for the third time since the start. There is the turnover ball. Harton coming. But Corbyn was with her. And no sooner have England got themselves on level terms than uh, Australia look to pull away once more. Yes. Well. Hallinan doing an awful lot, bringing the ball through the court, which is supporting the attack, but an unusual error there by Bell. Well, she is the specialist wing defender, isn't she, Renee Hallinan? Yeah. Started at, at centre uh, in Bath. And, uh, look more comfortable when playing with a WD on her front. 
Oh, superb ball to the back shooter to Cookie. Fabulous vision by Guthrie. Cookie almost makes a mess of it. But again, at the second time of asking. But England made to work hard for that centre pass to get back in front, didn't they? Yes, there's more pressure being put on for sure. And Gomez, Hallinan doing an awful lot of work off the ball just to close down the space. And it's hard work out there for Corbyn. Cookie stepping up as well. Oh, Guthrie just penalised on the uh, challenge on Revelian. And Revelian's feed to Bassett was oh so easy. And it's nine goals apiece. Safe, safe quality netball there by England, using the back up, the overlap move into the in the mid-court area, just giving them an extra time period to set up in attack. Bassett from distance, same results. Oh, that's gone all the way through. And England are penalised. Parton just having a word with Theresa Prince. It's a, we call it a stand. Australia again just playing the shorter ball, but Bayman in there just to try and get the turnover. Well, that one was a telegraph pass. Ball attack, that's contact. And this time it is Bassett. No, it's Bell, sorry, that has been penalised. Now Bassett is penalised, and they'll both be out the game. A good work by the defence of England, just fast feet moving around and just some body contact by Bassett. Back. Oh, like Beasy's pass to Guthrie, and Guthrie was looking down court. Just got to pick the game up, England, in the mid-court. A lot of pressure defensively on the player by Australia. They're, they're known for their tight quality one-on-one -on -one defence and that's what they're doing incredibly well through the mid-court. Well, Beckford Chambers is sold and Beasy is uh, one on two and Australia back in front now by one it'll be their centre pass and there's what just under three minutes remaining so a good time to get a score against the centre pass and a chance to just open up a little bit of daylight but that's well, good defence, and then just as England were going to turn the ball over, the foul is committed by Guthrie, and that's a, an annoyance for a, a coach, I'm sure. Yeah. And that goes off. Well, an England player last. Messing around like a pinball. Beasy tries to get a hand in, Bell's got a chance to consolidate. All or nothing for England, and on that occasion it was nothing, Australia lead by two, England 10, Australia 12, 155 remaining in the first quarter. England do not want to turn over ball here, that would make life just a little more tricky. Gomez holds the post, England halves the deficit. Important 90 seconds coming here. Yes, the pressure's got to go on in the second pass from the centre. England just with Guthrie Bayman trying desperately just to put pressure on the ball through to Bassett. Well, there is a turnover, and Australia have 70 odd seconds in which to make it count score one your center pass score again you lead by four and suddenly the first quarter is a good quarter yeah. australia lead by three their center pass 50 seconds remain certainly swinging the ball well the Diamonds. England led by five at the end of the first quarter in Bath. It looks as if 
Australia are going to lead by four and somehow Beckford Chambers has enough arms to get hold of that one. Bassett is smiling around, lovely pass, fingertip stuff. Harson must score, but she doesn't, and Australia turn it over. And they still have the chance to lead by four. Hallinan feeds Bassett. Bassett misses, time will expire, but Bassett will still have the chance. Some great pressure going on the shot there, but just, just a call against Agbizi. And I make it that that's that, and indeed, it is that, and England will have their chances. There won't be as many nerves, and she'll hit the court running from an England perspective this evening. So, England get the second quarter underway through Serena Guthrie, who finds Cookie. There is Francis' first touch of the ball. Guthrie down that left-hand side. Whistle is blown, and England have a penalty up near the transverse line. Corbin finds Harton to Guthrie, back into Hart, and Bully will be penalised. Martin with a free shot, and well, she missed one at the end of the first quarter, and she's missed one at the beginning of the second. A little wobble, she recovered well on Sunday, she's going to have to do the same again here. And the miss at the end of the first quarter was a key miss, wasn't it, in terms of the deficit? Yes, important that the defence strategy works for England, certainly pressure through the mid-court, they really do need to tighten up. Gomez finds Brown. Revellian's in motion, but Bell is the recipient, and Bell goes over the top to Bassett. Beckford Chambers can't get anywhere near it, and Bassett makes it a four-goal game to Australia, and Australia looking uh, quietly confident at this stage. But Bell's getting an awful lot of the ball at the moment, and she's a key playmaker around the shooting circle. Just mixes a rotation, works around Bassett, and good work from Corbin yep. to get in front of Hallinan. And then Beckford Chambers is penalised. I didn't see the actual incident. It was uh, spot watching the run of Corbin. It's uh, England's going to have to show a lot of the determination and spirit that they showed in Bath now, they trail by five. Well, they trail by six, sorry. They've yet to score in this quarter, and there's an intercept from Cookie. And it's just going a little bit south here for England, but Guthrie lifts the crowd with a flying interception. Harton round the back of the post. Guthrie comes back out to Sasha Corbin. Francis to Corbin. Yes, Corbin just electing to find the channel, the wide channel there. It could have gone earlier, but England really do need to score this goal. And they do. Cookie on the scoreboard. First score coming after two and a half minutes. Here's the intercept. Brown's down. She's OK. Revellian. Beckford Chambers gets a hand in. Now Revellian goes over the top. Beckford Chambers climbing all over Bassett. Advantage played, Bassett makes it a six-goal game again. Just unlucky around the circle edge. Beckford Chambers is getting a hand to an awful lot of ball, but it's just falling into the hands of the Diamonds. Any loose ball opportunity. Gomez is asked to move back. And then the foul on Bully, or from Bully, should I say, on Cookie. And Harton's back on the scoreboard. It's a test for the shooters when there's a lot of body contact in there. It can wear a player down as the game goes on. So crucial that they just mix up both both teams, just mix up what they're doing in the shooting area, switch the leads. And again, Beckford Chambers gets a hand to the ball, but it doesn't go her way. Caitlin Bassett seems to play with a permanent smile on her face. <laughs> Enjoying the challenge that Beckford Chambers is giving her. Teammates, of course, in Perth. And the watchful eye of Norma Plummer, the former Diamonds head coach. And at the moment, England not having to feed the circle because Australia are, are fouling or being called at least for fouls. 
Yes, there's a lot of interruptions in the play, a lot of body contact through the court that the umpires need to be tidying up and pulling the game back. Difficult job officiating at this level. That's a England ball. Nice touch off Bassett. I was trying to work out how tall Caitlin Bassett must be at six three and a half with her arms raised. She's got to be what? <laughs> eight, eight and a bit feet. No way over the top of that. Got to go round. Just a loss in possession there. France is so eager to get to the mid-court on that play that it just exposed England at the back just for the opportunities and options for the ball carrier bringing the ball through. So some work to do back there. Good take by Cookie. Big split landing. And England have uh, just steadied the ship at the deficit between five and six, or maybe between five and six. There is the take from Cookie once more. Contact centre, penalty. Guthrie penalised. And time is called as the ball is retrieved. Here we go again. Good take from and Bassett's momentum is deemed to have taken a. I know it's a footwork call. Well, England getting a couple of calls there that allows them just to stem the flow and a chance to get the deficit down to four. Yeah, nice interchange between Cookie and Corbin. And would you believe it? She's gone and missed it. Well. England have missed three very gettable shots at goal in this match already. Nine times out of ten, you would say they're getting, I mean, a great interchange of passing, Anita, but the, the end product is yes, not good enough. Great play, good take by Joe Harton. Crucial goal for England. And an England centre pass. Well, they're making life difficult for themselves here, England. Yes, just the options, a little bit more movement off the ball in attack. That's the opportunity that's needed. The work done there by Joe Harton. Just a little bit more linkage through the court in attack for England's needed. So we're back where we were at the start of the quarter. A run of three unanswered goals for Australia first up. has now been countered by a run of three unanswered goals for England in the mid part of the quarter. But it was an England centre pass at the start, so Australia having the better of this quarter so far. Yes, Bully's changed the tactic against the, well, certainly against the defence on the heart and shot, and that's just affecting Joe. She's not quite sure when the arm's going up and the hesitation. Bully's just capitalised on that. Well, Harton needs to find the answer and quickly. Because you're not going to get too many opportunities against Australia. Players just need to adjust. There's a lot of obstruction calls. Indication is their arms are being lifted at the side. So it does need to be adjusted to. Great pick up. Good pressure persistence by Beckford Chambers. Yeah, very good work from Beckford Chambers. It looked like a routine pass to receive. And Gomez called uh, touching the ball. Whilst in possession of uh, Cookie. Harton gets the shot away before any jump or hands can come up. She's just got to twist herself, Charlie, and get that ball up there and not worry too much about the defence. Harton usually so good at not worrying about what's going on around her. As Cookie tumbles into the advertising hoardings. Quickly rectified. Unlucky Sasha Corbin. And momentum taking her into Renee Hallinan. Yes, Corbin getting to far more ball in a defensive game, so. I'm sure that's what she's worked on in, in terms of the ball coming through the court, but it's this short game of Australia, just the change in pace as they hit 
the shooting third. And then we get the speed of play, as we saw there from Bell and Brown. Can't remember really an Australian shooter missing a number of easy chances, can you? No, and there is a different answer that's put out there, but good response by England. Much, much quicker from Joe Hart, yeah. and she went to the right, swung round, and when she saw that Bully wasn't there, the shot was a wave before Bully had any chance to get round. It's good to see Francis drop back in the circle. That did work, and that was where the pressure went on. So a change in tactic, mixing up what the England defence pairing are doing has helped there. But Australia making life very, very difficult for England to get it out of their defensive third, but they're away now. And Harton has a chance to make it a two-goal game. She's missed again. Oh, but she gets the call as Bully is a judge to have backed in. Harton and England can probably count themselves a little lucky with that call. That's good through court move by Guthrie there, just linking with Corbin. The options were there for England. Well, it's it's uh, now a one-goal game, England 21, Australia 22, and England showing that resolve again to come back. Having said that, in the second Test match in Nottingham three years ago, they trailed by six at quarter time. They came back to only a one-goal deficit at half-time and then went a little bit AWOL in the third quarter and, uh, and lost that one. Yes, head down by Gomez, Bully as well, he's always likely to do that, and good vision, early ball in. <laughs> Super take from Hart, and she stays in play and gets the goal, she's looking a bit more comfortable now. Just sense that Harton's got through the blip there and just settled into a game. And again, good pressure by Guthrie Bayman on the circle edge. It is this pass that's got to be stopped and the pressure's starting to go on by England on the outside of the circle. It's so difficult when the goal shooter is six foot three and a half, six foot four. It's all about pressure over the pass, just to try and set up Jet Beckford Chambers for the intercept. <laughs> Impressive again by Guthrie, just seeing the back shooter not committed to give that front mover the ball. But England have done this pretty well. They were alternating between the five and six goal deficit. Then they had a little spurt, got it to three and four, now to one and two. If they can just hold it here or even maybe get level or take the lead by the half time, this will be a superb quarter for England. Absolutely, and there, Beckford Chambers just on the fly out of the circle, just putting the pressure on and force the error. Timely point there by Chambers and. If this one goes in for England, it will put them back into contention. Well, Cookie somehow comes up with a rebound, but another bad miss, I would have to say, from Harton. It's when she thinks about it and has a second go. England are level once more, 25 goals apiece. It's a great comeback by England. They've worked tirelessly through this, on, and it is about their defensive game in this quarter, and credit to them. They really have put the pressure on, but the ball has got to go in the net for England against this Diamond squad. A look of frustration there as Harton missed that shot. She just turned away and just a look up to the galleries with that grimace. But uh, they're now too numerous, those misses. Bayman couldn't quite get that belt. We'll exchange passes with Brown and well, almost an extra pass for the Diamonds, but it gets through. 
As we enter the final minute of the first half. It's England 25, Australia 26. And there'll be a there'll be a sense of frustration here for England because having got back on level terms, had a chance to take the lead, then the, the goal against the centre pass, chance here for Australia to go two up, and all the hard work may feel sort of undone a little bit. Yeah, some, some great challenges by Guthrie, just there, contact call, but in contention, it's just about the timing and certainly getting a lot of hand to ball in defence England, just not falling for them at the moment. Good work by the Diamonds and England need to show urgency here. They need this final goal here of the half. Final seconds, Harton knows it and scores it. How important will that goal be in the final shakedown? We'll have to wait and see, but the half-time whistle has been blown and Joe Harton... And Australia, Australia lead by one. It's 27-26 to the Diamonds. And it is they that get us underway in the second half, attacking the post to our right-hand side. And a good work from Bayman. It breaks up the first attack. And Anita Navin, we've had half time just to wrap our head around what's happened in the first half. What's your take on it, Bean? Well, I think it's time just for a little bit more consistency. And certainly for England, they really did step up their game on defence, but just unfortunate on some of the loose ball around the court. But for me, the pressure that is being put on by Bell and Hallinan's bringing the ball through two thirds of the court really well, supporting the attacking Diamonds players. So England really do need to secure the goals without that stress that was put on Joe Harton. Well, a massive, massive half of netball for Australia. I was going through it. In fact, we do have a change for England and it has come at the goal shooter. Where it's uh, Sasha Corbin who's moved up into... Kadeen Corbin, sorry, who's moved up into... Goal shoot. Cookie's gone to wing attack. Harton is at goal attack. And... Uh, No changes for Australia, as I was say, an important half of netball for Australia. Going through their results since their first test match in 1938. I'd make it where they've played more than two test matches against a country and including tri-series. They've only lost six series. And the last time they lost a series, 3-0 to New Zealand in 2004. That is how strong they are as a country at netball and what England are trying to break. Australia talk about the winning mentality and it is all about the culture and the diamonds on and off the court to show that real resilience and will to win. England stepping up and Guthrie just keeping possession. Well, it's a real change-up of things from an England perspective. And, well, it comes from the intercepts. Zara Bayman getting a right hand to it. And Serena Guthrie. And just see what's happening. England electing to put the centre pass back, opening up the court, just giving Cookie a chance just to play in on the wing attack and find that spot around the circle. An England lead for the first time since... Uh, the back end of the first quarter. Just defence off court there by Francis. Good work by Cookie on the line, incredibly fast. Corbin's given that too much, she gets a second chance, and this time she makes it count. She's got the power and the strength to get up there for the rebound, so 
good that she was able just to secure that goal, just for confidence moving into this quarter. Plies her trade down at Team Bath. Well, you can find her at either end of the court. We've seen her at goalkeeper in the Super League and we've seen her at goal shooter in the Super League. Although she prefers it at the attacking end of uh, the court. Bayman and Revalian are having a right old tussle on the edge of the circle, the front of the foreground of your picture. And just putting the pressure on, Bayman will know that it's the work outside the circle when you've got the height of Bassett in there. The pressure's got to go on before the circle edge. Go, oh, good work from Francis, and perhaps a little bit fortunate to get away with that one. Just a turn of luck to the England girls, but a pick up there by Rebellion and gives opportunity to the Diamonds again. Great work by Hallin and through the court. And well, if they then go on and score from this possession, I guess no harm done. Oh, superb positioning, Beckford Chambers, good at body angle. She's had a really good couple of test matches, hasn't she? Ebony Beckford Chambers, uh, a player that has probably benefited a lot from playing in the ANZ. And Harton at least makes all her hard work count by scoring. So England lead by two. And now lead by three. Fabulous ball by Harton, just having the confidence to play Corbin through to the post. Perfect. And not surprisingly, we have an injury to Brown, one of my cynical injuries that we see from time to time just to take the steam out of the game. Both teams, England, will benefit from this break in play for sure. Chance just to regroup. Not a Often talk about. Maybe the player that is injured having to at least spend five minutes off the court. And that would stop coaches from calling for these, these timeouts to occur. It's part of the game, though, and it's how you respond to your momentum being broken up that counts. I think some discussion there with Alexander to the defensive unit talking to Gomez and Bully, just in terms of switching and just not being afraid to really switch that positioning as they're in the circle. Well, first five and a half minutes, and each England leads 7-3 in this quarter. It's a great start. Well, they did this, didn't they, in bar at various parts during the match, but then they had down times as well. But uh, this puts them in a great position but there's still just under 25 minutes of the match remaining Brown with her knee freshly taped it's good to continue yes, good good call by the umpire Good vision, looking there and seeing the body contact by Bassett. I think it was. Superb pass. That is a lovely pass from Harson, but again England letting themselves down up close. Corbin manages to get the rebound, and England now lead by four. It's an England centre pass, and Australia haven't come out of the changing room yet. No, England do need to build on this momentum. There's a lot of free space that Cook is creating and finding herself. But superb elevation, athleticism by Corbin. And a super, that's a superb take, totally off balance. Somehow manages to nail the landing. There's a sense of fatigue in the Diamonds pairing in defence and in other players through the court. Again, favour of England there, that call, just Guthrie doing the work that was needed. A run of five unanswered goals here. And Harton penalised its turnover ball. Just get a sense there is a need to use the, the putting the ball back to the third line and 
Parton was just a little bit slow to do that, but that she does need that option. The pressure is tight on the circle edge with Hallen and Gomez. Oh, Bassett has missed it, and she looks for the whistle rather than the rebound. England need to keep with the momentum. Not really an opportunity for another timeout to break the flow. It's really crucial. They could hold on. And Cookie can't find her teammate, Kadeen Corbin. And Australia have a chance to bring this run of, run of five to an end. Harton getting involved with Brown. It's up and over the top again. This time Bassett takes it, and this time Bassett scores. There's a wind-up in the preparation of Bell. You sense the long ball's going. It's just possibly a link of Francis Beckford Chambers. Doubling up on Bassett. Too soon, just too impatient the pass there from Harton. It wasn't on. Hallinham. Now feeds Brown. And Bassett. We have the free pass off shot. She ups for the former, finds Bell, he scores. And Australia trim the England lead to three. It's their centre pass. And that miss now from Corbett. Obviously the damage of two goals there and another centre pass going back to Hallinan on the overlap. And we're starting to see more use of the back centre pass, critical centre now for England. Well, Australia seem to be out of their little rut that they got themselves or found themselves in. Good take from Bully. Really good take from Rebecca Bully. And Australia are finding the rhythm again, the rhythm that has been here really for most of the match. Again, it's the work off the ball and the options that are available for England in attack and just limited then and Bully got every opportunity to take that intercept. Really good work as we see it once again and here come Australia to level things up. Oof. Guthrie coming through on the top and England have a run of five goals. Now is it the turn of Australia to have a run of five unanswered goals? Ooh. Bassett fells, she was held. She doesn't get annoyed with the umpires, does she, when she feels it's gone against her? She just laughs even harder. I think gets rid of the frustration just with the, with the wide smile and probably a strategy just to get on with the game and turn it into a, another shot as opposed to frustration. Great response by Joe Harton there and the England attack. And Theresa Prince just asking uh, Australia to get the ball back quicker, but I mean, from an England point of view, they won't mind. It's Australia that are behind, and Bully's there again to intercept. They're the ones that are behind on the scoreboard at the moment. Yes, yeah, just the hesitation there by Corbin and affecting Cookie. She wanted to give the first time ball. Oh, Francis making a real muck of that challenge on Rebellion. Rebellion picks herself up. She's made of tough stuff. Oof. Strong forearm, strong whole arm. Yes, just taking the contact straight up there. And again, Brown just pulling the defence, giving an opportunity for that long ball through to Bassett. And Australia are oh, back on level terms. 36 goals apiece. So you're going to be in for a grandstand finish, you feel. Another one. Just caring for the ball, and Francis just putting too much pace on that ball. And a chance for Australia to get back in front. Excellent play again by Chambers. It's really the last port, the last opportunity, and she's taking them back for Chambers. She's slightly exposed. She's relishing the duel that she's having with uh, one of the best shooters in the world. And good defensive work from Australia. England really struggling to get the ball forward. And going now, 
Corbyn. Got to be far more movement bringing the ball through the court for England. It's not a matter of giving one pass standing still. They've really got to follow up and be available and be an option. Well, two 30 odd remaining in the third quarter. It's a one goal game, or is it going to be level after Bassett's had her say? We are level once again. Who will blink first? As world number three and world number one face off against each other. Superb pass. Oh, she's getting into it now. She's letting the emotion out. This is the pressure point for England and the work of Brown and Bell. But there she goes, well played, Beckford Chambers. There's got to be options for England in this attack. More than one option as well. I mean, you look at the scoreboard, England 38, Australia 37, and you think how much good work Ebony Beckford Chambers has done in, in breaking up Australian attacks. If she, hadn't, if she hasn't played as well as she's played up to this point, yeah. Australia could be out of sight. Yeah. Yes, she's easily accounting for about six or seven goals back for Chambers in this quarter. Fantastic performance. Well, it won't count for anything if England don't win this test match. Corbin's shot, it's so flat, isn't it? It's a very, very flat trajectory. Very little margin for error. Ooh, lucky there in terms of the replay. Superb work, Joe Harton. Really good work, and both sides leaving it all out on the court. This is, this is again, is a very important moment in the match. Australia had the best of the final minute of the second quarter. If England can get the best of the final minute of uh, this third quarter. Oh, dearie me, super work, Pam Cookie. That will make a difference, I'm sure. And it was just, again, just not an option. The triangle not there around the circle edge for England, but that's much better. There it was, created by Cookie. So, 20 seconds remain in the quarter. Australia have to score here, you feel. As we see a replay of Cookie leading from the front. Final 10 seconds. Really wow. Keeping the ball out of the circle. Well, that is the end of the third quarter in place of Chanel Gomez. No changes for England. So, what can Australia do here? And Erin Bell gets an important first touch and Australia get turnover ball right at the very start and that is the start they required in this quarter. Yes, and England really do need to care for the first ball at the start of a quarter and it started well in quarter three with Bayman working really hard getting a lot of the centre passes but chance on a turnover again good pressure at the back in defence so we're back on centre pass options again important going forwards for England Just the timing affecting the quality of the pass for England and the move. Well, Joe Hart had, had a wobble in the first half. She was 100% in that third quarter. 83% for both uh, Australian shooters, Bassett and Bell. And 73% uh, for Kadeen Corbin. But scored at important times. Hart and scored at an important time. England lead by four. And it's going to be really fascinating to see how England cope with the pressure the closer we get to the end of the match, if indeed they're still in front, of course. Having said that, you have a fairly inexperienced lineup for Australia. Erin Bell with 16 caps, Kath Cox the exception, earning a 107th cap here tonight again set the triangle england structure in attack around the circles working for them good take by corbin already catherine cox going on the long rotation but choosing a wide 
passed across the court and taken by Francis. The difficulty Australia have got here and Lisa Alexander is if any of her substitutes take five minutes to get into the the uh, rhythm of this match, then the game could have gone for them. And that one just sneaks in, doesn't it? We were right behind that one, the angle. There's the intercept. Francis coming up with a great interception. And this is a key possession for England. Yeah, it's just sense they need to just take some pace off the ball, work the ball round. They were here, weren't they, in the third quarter? They led by five, couldn't get the sixth goal. Can they on this occasion? Yes, they can. And that's a fantastic start. Corbyn's just come out into this quarter with far more confidence as well. Well, Australia led by six at one stage in quarter two. There's more turnover ball. And Australia have a poor start to quarter four, just as they had a poor start to quarter three. Beckford Chambers again, just forcing the error there, the footwork, just covering Cox extremely well. Good work by Francis, supporting the attacking play. And that's what needs to happen, not to be afraid to put the ball back. Oh, the Valiant showing that she is prepared to put body on the line for her country. And the Diamonds need a lot more of that. Perfect. Pass. Oh, dearie me, and once again, England are found wanting underneath the post. Ooh, just Revellian gone over on her ankle. No, she's OK. And yes, oh, no, she has. She has. Is it? I thought she'd gone over on the ankle just by the way she felt. It's not one of those horrible ones where you see a, a player land on another player's foot. Just sense some an element of fatigue in there with Revalian. I'm just looking over at the four substitutes. And is that a uh, change coming? Is that Prattley putting on the bib? Well, yeah, she's no, she's not. She was half taking her training top off and she's sitting back down is she she hasn't got the call from Lisa Alexander yes she has and she's coming on a goal attack Brown is coming off Bell's gone to wing attack so it's now Cox and Prattley in the shooting circle Aaron Bell goes to wing attack and Bell's been very influential in this match so far and Brown actually, sorry, is moving to centre. Revellian's going to sit the rest of this one out by the looks of things. And the relationship with Prattley Cox there is probably a combination that's worked from the Swifts in terms of A and Z. So possibly not feeling the link was right with, with Bell in the goal attack spot with Cox. Oh, good work. Hallinan. Yeah, no. Australia. Yeah. Yeah, it is an Australia ball. Hallinan doing well. Now, what can these seven Australian players do here? They trail by six. They've got just over ten and a half yeah. minutes to try and dig themselves out of this hole. Six goals, as we've seen, can be overturned pretty easily. But it's knowing that if you don't do it now, then you've run out of time and being able to cope with that pressure. And Cox, well, it had a thought. Think about it, didn't it? It wiped its feet but dropped. Got to give the first time ball Guthrie there and Corbyn elected to move out, switching with Harton. Harton takes on the shot. Ooh, she's going to get another bite of the cherry. Mm -hmm. England back out in front by six. Bedford Chambers at it again. Cool for repossession. It's unfortunate there, but again, just trying to 
steal possession back for Chambers. Cox just finding a game and really is confidence in there for the Diamonds. So Anita, you know that uh, player of the match is your call, so we'll uh, come to you as we get nearer to the end of this match. England leading 45-40, Australia in possession. Will be their centre pass next. Bell, she liked that pass, just admired it after she had sent it, and why not? Yeah, she start to see the width of the court being used, all the channels, the wider rotation by Cox. We saw England respond to this sort of pressure from Australia in Bath. They went on to win the game when they were pegged back. They're going to have to do the same here, but it's even tougher now because history beckons for them. Prattley got nowhere to go. Good work from Bayman and then the foul comes in and Prattley will take on the shots which she finds and the deficit has been halved. England 45, Australia 42, eight minutes and what so Australia have trimmed three goals off the six in two minutes. Yeah some good take there by Bayman just really found a form and getting into this contest. But and Harton, shots. sorry, had one of those again. Lost in possession. Gerard working hard there, but forced the error. Credit to the England attack there. So, Cookie finds Francis, finds Corbin. Corbin's got nowhere to go. She's going to find Guthrie in that right-hand channel up over the top and it's Bully who gets the hand to it but it falls to Francis and England still have possession Harton with it on the edge of the circle she's gonna to have to come all the way back but she's timed out for three seconds and there's just no space everyone's trying to occupy the same square meter of floor just lost the timing all descending on the ball carrier there no options to be seen and Harton really did try and open up the court but too late yeah, contact from Beckford Chambers and Cox shows great composure. The difference is two. Australia centre pass, England under the cosh with just under seven minutes remaining. Australia are coming. Cox covering an awful lot of ground in that goal third and just there being contacted oh the miss and Beckford Chambers picks up the rebound and it reminds me of the third test three years ago at the 0-2 when uh, England led by five led by six sorry at the start of the final quarter and lost that match by two yes just Guthrie putting herself too far down the court then but England work the ball around Oh, how important that turnover goal. This is the one for England just to put another goal in, just to get the lead up there. Oh, lucky, lucky off Bully. There was complete miscommunication between Corbin and Cookie. And Bully fouls Hart and Hart and score. England back out to four now, 5.40 remaining. And it's the con um, obstruction call. Good ball by Prattley to the backspace for Cox. Easy take. There is a reliance on Bayman covering two thirds of the court, supporting the attack. Oh dear. It's gone against England. Well, let's have another look. What's your take on that? It wasn't a footwork call by Cookie. She did lose the ball, so 50-50 at that point for me. So could have been unlucky to Guthrie. 
that's a good take by Cox against Chambers. Lots of pressure on, but cool head by Cox in there. Australia centre pass. We've been here before, just a matter of moments ago. On that occasion, they turn ball over. Can they make it a one-goal game this time round? That would set up a interesting final four minutes or so. Yeah, it'd be good to look at um, Susan Prattley there on the take at the centre pass. Interested foot there. I'm not sure whether that's slightly a footwork call. She just spin and move the foot on a landing. Lisa Alexander trying to shout instructions from the bench. The noise in here makes it very difficult to hear. Cookie, fingertip take. Finds Bayman. Bayman's got nowhere to go. Finds Francis. Francis to Cookie. Guthrie offers on the transverse. Into Harton. Harton tried the quick ball into Corbin. Nothing there. Finds Guthrie. And then the foul comes in from Gerard and pressure is relieved. Every shot is massive. Every shot receives a big cheer. England lead by two. Yes, great pressure, Guthrie. Fabulous positioning. Corbin takes a flying pass and scores. England lead by three. There's three minutes remaining, just over. Let's have another look at this. Superb play by Serena Guthrie. England centre pass. This is a huge, huge play for both sides. Corbin falls to her. She doesn't drop her eyes. She makes it a four-goal game. Anna Mays urges just two and a bit more minutes of performance. Put in by Bayman. And Australia had possession. Time running out. 2.30 remaining. They what? Overturn three in two minutes. So they need to score from this possession to Australia. And then it's all a matter of looking after the ball from England's point of view. Yes, there's got to be a delay in play. And credit to Prattley there. She just gained a composure, but for England, it's keeping possession, working the ball through, support all the way through the court. Retention is all that is required from England, and now history is less than two minutes away. Harton can't find the support. Corbyn has it. This is a big shot. It's a big goal. England 51, Australia 47. The clock is ticking. 1.40 remaining. Bedford oh. Chambers, superb work. What a performer at the back there. She's just so with the vision of what's coming through the court. Incredible. And that's not to be wasted. England really do need to keep that ball. Beckford Chambers is working so hard for them. Guthrie screaming at the front three, telling to get back. There's, what, 120-odd remaining in the match. Australia, they need goals, they need goals quickly. Lisa Alexander now looking very, very anxious. For players like Sarah Bayman, she'll be just working through what needs to happen. She's supported the defence as well. OK, Anita, we've got a minute left. England lead by three. Who's your player of the match? For me, it's got to go to the defender, Ebony Beckford Chambers. Absolute pinnacle of performance tonight for her. Superb in every way. Athleticism, well, vision, just real resilience. Well, best of, well, congratulations to her, but this may not be done just yet. The clock would suggest that England have done enough and Australia need to move it quickly. And England playing very sensibly. And possibly a little cynically, you just make the fouls. Beckford Chambers with another huge touch. 30 seconds remain. Surely it's too much, even for the Diamonds. Oh, good play, but great tip there by Brown. Good reaction. Cox makes it a two-goal game. 51-49, Australia's possession. It's going to be too little, too late for the Diamonds. England are going to create history here. What a show by England, they've worked so hard, excellent. It's all over, 
Your final hooter. No, it's not. It's not all over. It's not all over. It's not all over. It is now. Hey, fabulous. And England are victorious. They have defeated Australia.